I don't know what gas prices are in your neighborhood, but in mine, they're high. So driving to a restaurant, it gets expensive. And it also means I got to take a shower. I got to get dressed. Sometimes I just want to eat at home with no hassles. And that's why Factor Meals makes so much doggone sense. You can get fully prepared gourmet meals delivered to your doorstep. And ready-made Factor Meals, they start at $11. I'm taking the rest of that money and I'm putting it in my gas tank. Thank you very much. Head to factormeals.com slash fullhouse50 and use code fullhouse50 to get 50% off. Ka-ching, gas in your car. That's code fullhouse50 at factormeals.com slash fullhouse50 to get 50% off. Just think about those gas prices when your food gets delivered to you, huh? Mm -hmm. It really does factor into your budget. See what I did there? <laughs> Factormeals.com. Okay, I, I've got to go. I'm, I'm getting hungry. Welcome to episode three of Full House Rewind, also known as our first day of school. I'm your host, Dave Coulier. Karen Miller is our guest on the show today, and, well, she's going to be joining us shortly. Episode three opens with a scene in DJ and Stephanie's room, and it's the first time that we see Andrea Barber playing the character Kimmy Gibbler. The girls on Full House were nothing short of incredible. Their comedic timing was impeccable, and their ability to switch gears into dramatic scenes was, was I have to say, really impressive. They were the heart and soul of Full House and had the acting chops to carry entire scenes throughout the series. I met the Full House girls in 1987 when Candace Cameron and Andrea Barber were only 11 years old and Jody Sweeten was only five. Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen were only nine months old. So I feel like I'm truly a, an uncle, big brother to all of them. Candace, Jody, and Andrea would go on to star in Fuller House and grow into even more accomplished comedic and dramatic actresses. Mary Kate and Ashley are now fashion icons who have built an empire from their clothing lines. So, to say the least, I'm very proud of them and I love them dearly. And with that, let's get on with the show. Today, we're talking about episode number three, also known as the first day of school. Here's what it says about episode three on IMDb. Danny, Jesse, and Joey try to convince Stephanie that school is cool while DJ tries to make a clean escape. There's some really funny scenes in this episode, the girls reciting the Pledge of Allegiance, Joey and Jesse giving Michelle a bath. The girls are leaving for their first day of school. Danny breaks out his huge 1980s video camera as the guys sing Sunrise Sunset from Fiddler on the Roof. We like to hear what you think about episode three, so send us an email at fullhouserewind at podco.us. You've got messages. Oh, time to check the messages. Hey, Dave, it's me, Pee Wee Herman. I love your show, Full House Rewind. It's kind of like Pee Wee's Playhouse with Full House. It's a playhouse, Full House. <laughs> Maybe I'll stop by with my giant underpants. Hey, Pee Wee. Yes, Cowboy Curtis? I just saw my horse wearing your giant underpants. Oh no, gotta go! <laughs> you know, Pee Wee's Playhouse aired during the same years as Full House. I loved watching Pee Wee's Playhouse. I really did. And you're going to love our special guest. As I mentioned earlier in the show, the women of Full House played a huge role on the show. Not just in front of the camera, but behind the scenes as well. Karen Miller and I have quite a history. Seems like, well, it seems like our lives just keep reconnecting. I met Karen when she was working on Full House and became a producer. Karen has gone on to have a stellar career. She was the VP of Worldwide Programming for the Disney Channel, was the senior VP of Universal Kids, and is now the CEO of Cyber Group Studios USA. And we're even developing an animated series for kids together. Here's what Karen looked like when Full House was on the air. 
Please welcome to Full House Rewind, Karen Miller. Hey, woo. Yeah, that's right. Woo. You can hear all the wooing going on. Thank How you. are you? I'm so good. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. We got to see Jeff Franklin. Uh, we crossed uh, paths as you were coming in. He was leaving, wrapping up the first episode. We had our own little mini reunion. Love that. So many stories, so many things that happened. How, how are your kids? You know, I was going to say when you talked about Jeff, like we grew up together. We all grew up together. Yeah, and I haven't we, grown up yet. Well, true. I'm still true, very true. immature. And that's what we love about you. <laughs> but, but we were a family in every sense of it. I mean, yeah. and so my kids, my son in particular, grew up on the set. He was in a number of episodes. Um, and it's a blast to go back and, and just go down memory lane. And yeah, I mean... We were all so young. We were. How old was your son Chris when? So Chris we were was. Doing so I was actually pregnant on the show. Um, there's a picture of of us. I was pregnant on the show, and actually, I was at a mix. Don't remember the episode, but I was at a mix, and it was about 11:30 at night. Walking back to the office, my water broke. <laughs> Two weeks early. Was that, that was at Lorimar Studios. That was at Lorimar. Yeah. My water broke two weeks early. I didn't really think that much of it. It was my first child. And I was like, oh, it'll be fine. Um, called my doctor and she was like, well, okay, so tomorrow you'll have a baby. I was like, right. <laughs> and I went home and six hours later, Christopher was born. So um, literally we did everything together on yeah. Full House. We we would spend weekends at, we'd go to, to John's house. We'd have pool parties. Yeah. And dinners and, and yes. you know, we would, we would hang out after work. That's how much we loved each we other. Loved, yeah. yeah. It was amazing. My son, Luke was born right. during full house and uh, he used to call the show daddy's show. Right. And yeah. rightly so. Yeah. And then Olivia, she was born. So she was born in 97. 97. Oh, so the show is so, already. Yeah. So she was, um, yeah, so she's now 25 and Chris is 33 and both are in the business. So I've either done something incredibly right or terribly wrong. I and, don't and know. And what, what are they doing? So um, Olivia is in social media. She works for NBC Universal. Oh. Um, she's across E and Bravo. And Christopher is in animation. He works for Bento Box. Oh, I know Bento Box. Yeah. yeah so they, he's a, what a are, production they, they, supervisor. They do. Um, they do um, uh, Bob's Burgers. Bob's Burgers. That's probably what they're most known That's for. Right. Bob's Burgers. That's right. He did that series. He's on a series called The Great North now. So watch that. Um, so, yeah, it's great. I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> Um, I want to go back and, and welcome to episode number three here, Thank you. Uh, also known as the first day of school. Yes. Uh, I want to go back to those early days because a lot of our audience doesn't know a lot of these stories. What was your first, I mean, I, I talked about your credits, you know, um, before you came out here, uh, but what was your first original job title on Full House? Well, officially, I was an assistant to Jeff Franklin, and right. it was right place, right time. I was in the lobby at Lorimar going on a job interview, and a friend of a friend saw me, and Jeff's assistant had just gotten fired, and they needed someone to fill in. They were doing a pilot, and I was I made a million excuses. I was stupid. I was 20-some years old. I was like, well, I'm busy. I've got to play tennis tomorrow. So she was <laughs> like, just do it. It's a pilot. Do it for the week. Okay. So I walk in the next day, I'm there, um, and I'm on stage, and we're shooting the pilot. And um, we wrap the pilot, and Jeff said, well, if you're not doing anything while we wait to see if we get picked up, do you want to stay on and right. hang out? I need somebody. Uh, and so I did. And so then when the show got picked up, I became a production manager. So I had been, I'd started my career Assistant. on soaps. You, oh, on soaps. On soaps. So I was on a, not on a soap. I was behind the <laughs> scenes on a soap. Uh, I was a script supervisor and then I was an AD. And so that's what I thought I wanted to do. So, right. um, yeah, full house, just right place, right time. So the way you get into full house is through being Jeff Franklin's assistant. Yeah. So I was his assistant for, for the pilot. And then I stayed on for the, the time while we were waiting for the show to get picked up. And then the show gets picked up. And then I said, well, I don't, want to be an assistant you know I've done this and I've done that and and I think at that point they had hired an AP uh, Phyllis 
Nelson. Phyllis Nelson. And yeah. so they said, all right, well, we'll kind of figure this out and we'll figure out a title for you. And so that was the production manager title. And then I became a producer down the road. Um, but it was amazing. I mean, it was, it was just, you know, having been on other series, it is one of the most unique sets and experiences and, and truly a family. And I know we probably use that word too much, but I don't think you can ever use that word too much when you're, when you're building something. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we were, we were young, very young and oh, yeah. we, you know, we were a lot of us, it was our first time. We yes. were first timers being on a sitcom, you know, and especially coming into that Miller Boyette stable, they were so yes. successful as exec producers and here we come and we're just kind of newbies and they're this powerhouse producing team. It was it was an amazing experience to like you you jumped onto the roller of coaster course. and you were in for a ride. Well, and when you think back that we were in our twenties and that Yeah, I was twenty seven right? when we so shot the pilot. We were in our twenties and what a unique opportunity that was. I mean, I don't I'd I'd like to believe that that happens for people now. I'm not sure that it does. And I just think you, you know, if you didn't know it, you learned it. You know, you there was such a collaborative environment on the set um, that you just supported each other in ways that really replicate a family. The net was on the set. What was happening while we were down rehearsing on the stage? What was what was happening behind the scenes? Can you kind of describe that? I mean, so we we were on the amazing what is now the Sony lot, um, and it was the Lorimar lot at the time, and we which was MGM, which was MGM, yes, yeah. originally. Um, so we were next door to Dallas. We were just, I mean, the creme de la creme were, was on that lot. So we were surrounded by so many people and talent and opportunities. And behind, I mean, we we kind of worked out of a bungalow. Um, and I, I think it was a little bit chaotic. I mean, you know, we were launching the series that was, there were a lot of cast members. And, you know, they always say, don't work with dogs and, and kids, right? <laughs> and there were a lot of kids and there were dogs and there were always a lot of people on set. Parents, Parents. families. Um, well, John John's family was always there. Yes. Uh, Loretta and Bill Stamos always came. You had Sam and Janice Sweeten. Yeah. Uh, uh, Barbara Cameron was always yep. there. She always brought her cookies. Robert, that was a thing. Yeah, she brought Show cookies. Show night, she made cookies. Hopefully, like, you should share the recipe. I don't know. Does she share the recipe? I, I don't know. Maybe. Do you, but maybe do you remember? We, can... we did a Full House cookbook. Oh, I, I don't think, remember that. Yes. See, this is stuff I don't Okay, know. so there's a Full House cookbook. I, I will get it to Dave so he can show it. <laughs> um, it's a Xerox. With a, who, who made this cookbook? I want to say it was the moms. I want to say it was Andrea, Janice, and Barbara. Um, and we all gave everybody, even behind the scenes, we all gave recipes to. Um, so I will, I have it. I've seen it at my house. I will bring it. Oh, that was Sherry Barber. Yeah, yeah Sherry, Sherry Barber. Sherry Barber, yeah. Janice Sweeten, Barbara Cameron. See, I, I never knew this. There yeah. was so much stuff happening backstage with the kids. I just knew that they had monitors in their rooms and me and John and Bob would be goofing around on the stage and the moms would come out and go, seriously guys, really? Right. Like right. really the kids are watching. And I, was, I, I remember thinking they've been watching us this whole time. Yes. Like I had no idea that they had monitors in their room. Well, and I think you just aren't, you know, I think you're just being an adult, right? Like and yeah. you're goofing. Oh, and Especially the kids are, Bob. And the kids are taking it all in and they're not saying anything. They're just, they're also new to all of this. So to them, it perhaps was just normal. Like, and I don't think they went back to their parents and said, I said a bad word. Um, but I, but it was picked up on the monitors. So. Uh, of course so, it yeah. was. Yeah. We um, got in trouble many oh, times when the moms would walk out and you'd just see them with the their arms, arms crossed. Yeah. And that yeah, was like, like the, and, and usually it was either one of two names. It was either, Bob or Dave. <laughs> Dave. And I was like, oh, we're in trouble yeah. again. I don't know what gas prices are in your neighborhood, but in mine, they're high. So driving to a restaurant, it gets expensive. And it also means I got to take a shower. I got to get dressed. Sometimes I just want to eat at home with no hassles. And that's why Factor Meals makes so much doggone sense. You can get fully prepared gourmet meals delivered to your doorstep. 
and ready-made factor meals, they start at $11. I'm taking the rest of that money and I'm putting it in my gas tank. Thank you very much. So I'm here. I'm looking at what I can order at factormeals.com. I want the chicken Alfredo pasta and uh, filet mignon and shrimp, a little surf and turf. And you know what? If you and your loved one are carb conscious, how about the holiday spread for two, right? Truffle butter, filet mignon, potato mash, baby carrots, and gingerbread spiced cheesecake. Sign me up, okay? You know, because it's the holidays. I just want to sit around in my stretchy pants and watch Elf a hundred times, <laughs> you know? And then with the extra gas money, you can go to factormeals.com and send a gift card to someone you love. Maybe to someone you just kind of like, right? And Here's another thing. I like drinking my greens. I'm not going to sit and make a big vegetable bowl and, and munch on it. So I'm going to get the apple kale wheatgrass juice that Factor has. And they even have smoothies. I'm getting those too. Because a lot of times I don't even know what's supposed to be good for me. It's like I need a nutrition coach. So imagine this. I go to factormeals.com. There's a number there. You can talk to a registered dietitian for 20 minutes and it's free. Mm hmm. Free 99. Pretty good price, right? So head to factormeals.com slash fullhouse50 and use code fullhouse50 to get 50% off. Ka ching, gas in your car. That's code fullhouse50 at factormeals.com slash fullhouse50 to get 50% off. Just think about those gas prices when your food gets delivered to you, huh? Mm -hmm. It really does factor into your budget. See what I did there? <laughs> Factormeals.com. Okay, I, I've got to go. I'm, I'm getting hungry. So, so what was it like back in production during that time? You're, you're coordinating a lot of right, things. Right, right. So what was a typical Karen Miller day? I mean, it was action packed, right? I mean, you were in the midst of shooting a show and you're also prepping for the next show. So two things are happening at the same time. And in the course of prepping for that next show, a lot of decisions have to be made. Are we redressing a set? Are we bringing in a new set? What's the budget? What are we doing on casting? Um, how's the script coming? So. You know, the reality is, is as the show is being produced, and Jeff probably talked about this, the writers that are in a writer's room, right. they're writing, and they're writing till wee, wee hours of the morning because they're trying to get it right. And and I also think early days, Full House, you know, it wasn't smooth sailing by any chance. Uh, by, there was, it was, no, it was chaos. Yeah. Yeah. It was chaos. Well, it was we chaos. were finding our way. We were, totally. We were trying to figure out, because I remember when, Tom and Bob came up to us and it was about, I think it was after episode 13. And they said, we finally figured out that, that this is a family that, yes. that, you know, it wasn't about three guys having fun with, you know, their dates and stuff, raising three little girls. This was a family and families yes. come in all different shapes and sizes. And so it's, it's you guys bonding yeah. with the girls and creating this, this nuclear family. So there was a decisive moment. When yes. they all decided, uh, Jeff and Tom and Bob, this is a family show. Yeah. And once once we kind of had that as our operating system, everything kind of clicked. The scripts kind of clicked. Right. For us as actors on the stage, it clicked. And s suddenly we kind of had a through line of, oh, this yeah. is what this is. So you guys are doing all this behind the scenes stuff. And then you come down to the stage. What is it like when you come on the stage and you see us there basically goofing around, rehearsing, having the time of our lives, but we're working hard. Sure. We're putting in long hours and we're trying to get these scripts to work. What is it like? I mean, it's pure joy, right? Like, so you're, you're working behind trying to make those decisions that are going to give the actors and the set the best chance to be able to execute a fantastically written script. And so it's joyful. I mean, you laugh all the time. I remember thinking, okay, I, can, I have to choose my words carefully. I have to engage the right way because otherwise 
I am going to laugh the entire time. And it, you'd say something so simple and simplistic and and it would turn into a five minute gag with you <laughs> or Bob. And it was it was just joyful. I mean, I, I I can't tell you that I've ever been on a set that is that much fun. And and again, everybody works so hard. Yeah. It, it it you had a way that and and certainly the tone was set by Rich Carell and by Joel Zwick. Um, the premier directors of Full House, that it was just fun. like, and, and it should be fun. That's the thing. And I think it also, when you go back and watch those episodes now, you see that it's fun. You, you, yeah, well, you want to yeah. be a part of that family. Yeah, it was new and it, it was exciting. And we were kind of all in it together. You know, Stamos was already kind of a, an established star. But for me, it was like walking into a giant toy box every yes. day. And I remember John saying to me sometimes like, hey, uh, you need a guitar? And I'm like, I don't really need a guitar. He goes, I'm going to get you a guitar. Watch. <laughs> he goes, you're on a you're on a hit, successful sitcom. He goes, watch how this happens. And I remember he he asked Roger Montesano, who was our, oh, yes. our prop master. Our prop? Yes. He said, hey, Roger, can you get Dave a, a guitar? We need to work on something for a scene. And I was like, John, don't, don't, don't. Like, and he goes, just hold on. And, he, and Roger just didn't blink. He goes, what kind? He goes, a Fender, Strat, black. <laughs> and he goes, do you want an amp too? And I was, I was like, uh, okay. Uh, okay. And after lunch, there was a black Fender Strat sitting in my dressing room. And I thought to myself, wow, this is pretty remarkable. Like I have access to this giant toy box yes. where if I need a prop or I need something that I think I can put into a scene, it just magically appears because you're at a major television studio, yeah. movie studio. Well, and I think it came out of, first of all, I feel like it came out of this relationship that you and Bob had, right? This ease of working together and and essentially growing up together and just being funny together. So, and we were so comics, much of it, yes. You know, so we were used to just like taking over a room and, right. and, you know, making it whatever. And I think, again, I think the beauty of the show <laughs> was that, yes, you know, Jeff and team had, had well-written scripts, but... Um, the spontaneity that that was created on the set that ended up in those episodes was purely joy and fun and funny. The writers were very, um, they were very generous with me yes. because I remember they would come to the comedy clubs and I think you came yes. to, to one of my yeah. shows back in the day. And, you know, they would, they would take all of that stuff and incorporate it into scripts. And I remember sometimes they gave me so much freedom, especially by season two, uh, where they would just say, hey, you'll come up with something funny right. here, right? And I was like, yeah, I'll come up with something funny. You know, so to have that much, you know, freedom within the confines of a show, to be able to come up with those bits, it was really liberating. Yeah, you oh, know? absolutely. Because I, I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, I, I really, I didn't know cameras really well. And I remember Stamos just grabbing me sometimes because he's like, hey, you're an upstager. So he would right. physically just move me in a scene. And, and you know, I started to get it. And I, and I watched John a lot right? because he would play to those cameras, you know, and I would go, ah, oh, this guy's a pro. And he knows just when to the timing. He knows when to turn. He knows when to hold. He knows, he knows so much about camera technique and getting the laughs. Right. And I remember... Tom and Bob, Tom Miller and Bob Boyette saying, uh, we need a live audience because of John or because of uh, Bob and Dave. Yes. We want those guys to hear the laughter. Yes. And so we had a live audience every Friday night. Every Friday night. And also, I mean, we've got to pay tribute to Tom Miller and Bob Boyette who who have a legacy in this business of creating these amazing series and also not only creating these great series, but creating environments um, and casts that allowed all of this to happen. Because that really goes back to, you know, the way that, that they were trained with Gary Marshall, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, that kind of Camp Gary. And, and I think you saw that certainly in Full House. We didn't know what that was. But we benefited by what yeah. Tom, Tom and Bob brought. And they were, they were very generous to oh. us. I was talking to Jeff Franklin about this. My sister Sharon was very sick uh, during during our uh, production run, and um, 
you know, we knew that she wasn't going to be on the planet for very long. And I remember Tom Miller, I was having a tough week and Tom Miller pulled me aside and he's just said, what would you like me to do? You name it. He goes, are you okay with everything? Like, is she taken care of? And I said, I said, I'm fine, Tom. And my family's fine. And thank goodness I have this job because I can help my family. And he said, whatever you want. He goes, you just tell me. He goes, if it's a financial thing, he goes, it's taken care of. Yeah. And I said, Tom, I said, and I remember saying to him, I said, can we just invest that into our friendship yeah. and thank you? And that's, those are the kind of guys, how generous they were to us because it goes back to family. Yeah. They treated us like we were their kids. It was, it was really special. And I don't think that that happens on TV shows. No, I mean, it just, all the little things. Remember when Mary Kay and Ashley wanted to ride, one wanted to dance and one wanted to ride horses. Well, they made that happen. Like they called their, their call times were later to accommodate for them having these extracurricular activities. Yeah. They, when I think it was either Candace or Jody, and they'll have to tell you which one, but it was like they had science, they had a science project. I feel like they brought in Bill Nye, the science guy. I feel like <laughs> like they did things like that, that they gave them opportunities. So you're studying science. We'll bring in somebody to make science fun. We'll, so your kids want to be president? I'll bring the president yeah, in. How about I mean, that? It, it just, it, and again, I think it it also ultimately benefited, I think, the kids and, and certainly us as adults because it allowed them to have some balance in their life. And, and it's tough. It's really tough for kids um marla sokoloff is going to be a guest here and uh christy um carlson romano is is coming on and yeah i'm going to talk to them about being you know child actors because it's really difficult for kids and i and i remember you know studio execs if the kids were you know gaining weight or something you know they would have these conversations and i just thought wow that is really really tough and you're life as a TV star happens on a stage at a studio and you're kind of in this little confined incubator environment. And then you have to go back to school and be a kid and there's teasing kids that are really jealous of of what you do. And, and it's gotta be so tough. And I think, I think Tom and Bob and Jeff all had, you know, the watchful eye to really protect those kids. It was really remarkable to see that. I feel like they, I mean, it was, it was just rare. I didn't have anything to compare it to, but I knew then that it was rare. I knew that, you know, if the, if the kids needed anything, you know, the show was going to be able to give them that opportunity so that they didn't miss out on that. Um, And that it would only help um, support what they wanted to do in life. And, And I think that is unique. I mean, yeah, I, I can't imagine. You're also surrounded by adults all day long, <laughs> funny adults. Two of them who Two are of inappropriate, them inappropriate at times. And I also think you, you just, um, your sense of value and, and worth is probably skewed by virtue of people oh, absolutely. all the time telling you you're funny, you're great, you're this, you're that, and also catering to your every need. Do you do you remember that? So. We were in, we had gone to San Francisco to shoot. I think we were shooting main title footage. We'd mm-hmm. gone to San Francisco. That was Francisco. Rich Carell. Yes. Yeah. And so there was a day that we were going over the bridge and most of the cast had already gone. We had, and, and Saget, for some reason, Bob was not in that, that initial um, ship of, of, of cast out. And he decided to go for a run. Now, I don't know that Bob ever ran. I I don't, I really, I don't know that I've I've ever seen Bob run, but he decided to go take a run and he decided to go from the hotel down to to the wharf and he gets there and then he calls me and he says, "Um, can you send, can you send a driver? And I was like, for what? And he goes, I'm not going to run back. And I was like, there's no, there's no transportation drivers. We're all on the other side of the hill. And so um, he, I said, he goes, well, what am I supposed to do? And I, I said, he goes, I don't have any money. <laughs> and that was long before Ubers and, and, and phones. Uh, so I said, well, you've got to flag down a taxi, get in the taxi, go to the hotel, tell the taxi driver to wait for you, go to your room and get some money. 
and that it was like as if you know again i mean it was it was just funny and that's an adult and that's an example of of obviously you know of course he just thought something was going to someone was going to come and pick him up we yeah. were going to take care of him that's bob that's bob that's bob and it was the best and so you know he came to set and i was like bob bob first of all you shouldn't be running <laughs> <laughs> anywhere anywhere yes. ever Ever in his tiny shorts. Because well, also remember those were the days yes, like those were the like the dolphin shorts, shorts like, yeah. kind mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah, you shouldn't so, have been wearing those. No, either. No, no, you shouldn't have been wearing those. So, so you really like myself. We, you know, got to see this arc, and we got to see Full House go from a struggling little show that might not get picked up to boom, it hits. And then I remember. Was it for, I did a voiceover and I think it was for syndication. We got, yes. we did a hundred shows. The show went into syndication. And then by that time you were producing, was, were you doing post? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were yeah. supervised post right. production supervisor exactly. back then. Exactly. So then I remember you said, Dave, can you do a voiceover for me? And it was for Warner Brothers television distribution where I did the voiceover at yes. the end of each episode. Uh, and that's what it was. It was telling you who owned the show and it was who it was distributed by. And I and I didn't know what I was doing at the time. Yeah, and those were the days also the syndication was that was where big money was, right? right. Like I mean, it was obviously in, in network and advertising and viewership, but certainly in in syndication. Um and and yes, you provided the voiceover to say it's a product of Warner Brothers television yeah. distribution. Um yeah, we would we would have to take the episode because the episode would be cut for um, for network to the network standards. Like 22 minutes of, and Right, and where the act change, breaks right? had to be and yeah. so on. And then the show would have to be recut for syndication. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I remember thinking, uh, wow, this is, uh, this is a different ballgame, syndication. 100 well, then, shows. And then the show was syndicated in over 100 countries around the world. And I thought, that is just spectacular. I still it, get checks from like, like uh, Spain. Yes. 10 cents. Well, do you remember when we would start <laughs> to get in those dubs when, so when a show would go to be sold into right. to, to um, Portugal, um, it, this show would be dubbed. And so you would, we would then get a copy of what that dub was. And so we'd hear all these different iterations of Dave's voice, which many did not sound like you <laughs> at all. And we would play them. We played them at one of our rap parties. Yes. And, I, and the Japanese one was the funniest. The, I remember everybody watching themselves speaking in Japanese, like which actor <laughs> is doing my yes. voice. And that is so funny oh, because yeah. for my character, it was weird because, you know, all of a sudden it'd be, he rookie. And I was like, <laughs> whoa, this is just, but it was so funny hearing all of those different dubbed in languages. And then we'd get to, and it just, I remember people laughing yeah. so hard at that because we had never seen that before. Well, and I feel like you must have gone as you traveled around the world and certainly with Fuller House and just to have that recognition and um, and response no matter where you went. People, people thought they knew you and they were yeah. your family and yeah. your friends. Well, when you come in their living room, you know, you're part of their Friday night. You know, when we went to Japan for Fuller House, I learned a couple of things. First of all, that I was a big star in Japan. My wife, Melissa, and I, we flew there for the big, you know, uh, the push that they were doing in Japan to launch on Netflix. And I remember we flew all night and we get off the plane and we hear people cheering and we see all of these people standing behind ropes. And I'm like, there must be like a Japanese rock star on our flight or something. And my wife, Melissa says they're wearing Mr. Woodchuck and Red Wing shirts. And I was like, what? And there were about 500 people just standing there yelling. And I, and I was so tired and I, I wasn't ready for it sure. at all. Cause I'd never been to Japan. I had no idea. No. But then I learned that. So I stood there for like hours, just signing stuff and taking pictures with everybody. And it was really mind blowing. Um, but then I heard that in Japan, they used Full House to Full House episodes to teach American culture to students. Yeah. And that is, that's amazing. Oh, absolutely. That's amazing. 
Well, and I think so often you hear people um, who say that they watch the show to learn English. Candace Cameron's husband, Val Bure, and his brother, uh, Pavel Bure, uh, they told me, because uh, I played in a charity hockey game with them, and then I introduced Val to Candace, and they got that. married. Yes. Um, they told me that they they grew up in, in Moscow, and they said we would drink our coffee in the afternoon, and that's how we would we would watch the show, and we would we learned English. That's that's pretty it's amazing just, when you hear that. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing all the stories and all the experiences that have come out of a show, right? I mean, and are still coming out. And yeah. the fan, I mean, a the love that everybody on Full House whether you were in front of the camera or behind the camera, has towards the fans of Full House. I mean, I was just telling you the story of someone when I worked at Disney. She was in scheduling, and she wrote her thesis on Full House. Yeah, yeah And, pretty, you know, I mean, that was cool. so influential to her life. Yeah. Um, well, we, you know, we love the fans. And, you know, this show, we try to acknowledge that, how much we love and appreciate our fans, because they really are the heart and soul of everything. Full House. And I've heard so many stories over the years about how Full House has either saved someone's life or made their life better. They had a, you know, a tough childhood and we were their family. You know, it's, it's almost like the show became video comfort food for people, Absolutely. you know, for like a couple of generations now. And Jeff Franklin mentioned this earlier uh, on our previous show, a couple of shows back, he said, you know, it's really changed a lot of people's lives in ways that we don't even know. Oh, absolutely. And he said, that's really amazing because that really, I don't think that was the intent of the show. It was just something that happened that our fans picked up. And uh, it's, it's so nice to be able to, to do a show like this and thank all those yes. people, um, you know, for something that we didn't even know we were doing at the time. Well, how many times have you parented your son and been in conversation with others where you not knowingly repeat a line from <laughs> full house Tell where them you're to, like, hey, cut it out, ex- cut it out, cut Stop. it out. Yeah. Right? But where you say something and you're like, I heard that before. Wait, you don't say that enough. It, even in, in this episode, in episode three, there's a beat where DJ repeats to Stephanie <laughs> something that, that Danny, her dad has just told her. Right. And I think that was, it was so subtle, but I think it it was absolutely something that was purposeful and that I think was recognized. I mean, I certainly know that there were moments in my kids' lives yeah. um, that you would just be like, well, that worked for Danny Tanner. So thanks. Sure it's gonna uh, work for by me. the way, thanks for doing your homework, watching episode three. Do a lot of memories come back as you're watching that episode? Uh, I mean, yes. And I laughed. I laughed and laughed and laughed. And I can't tell you the last time I sat in front of something. I mean, there's a handful of shows where you just laugh out loud. And hmm. the A, the joy that it still gives me, the memories of being on set, the memories of, the, of being behind the scenes, but also just the professionalism of the kids in particular, not to say you weren't professional, but, (laughs) uh, but you look at, I wasn't sometimes you look at Jody Sweeten (laughs) and you look at amazing. She was, her timing is impeccable. Like I think it was, she was four. Her timing, she's spot on. And, and Jody came to set and she knew she was off script from the minute she walked on set. Amazing. And she knew her lines. And if you were in a scene with her, she knew your line. So if you didn't know your line, she'd remind she'd you, she'd give you your line. Yeah, She'd go, Dave. And she'd cue me. I, I was like, oh, oh, okay, oh, I sorry. mean, she set the standard, I think, for everybody. And obviously, Candace came well prepared and I Mary talked Kate and Ashley it. Yeah, in I their own way. I talked about it earlier in, in the show where I, I talk about how the girls really were the heartbeat of Full House. And it was... And it was amazing to watch, um, you know, the girls grow into yes. great actresses, handling scenes that were tough. I mean, they 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 covered some pretty tough subject matter, drugs and drinking. Mm-hmm. And I think we did one where Candace is, you know, coming of age. Right. And I think she has her first menstruation, yes. I think. 
Yeah. I think that we talk about that. Um, and relationships. And relationships. And, um, you know, it was really coming of age. Candace's first kiss. Yes. And, you know, I've talked to Candace about this. And she said it was really difficult, you know, because she had never kissed a boy. And here she's got to do it on national television. I mean, can you imagine the pressure of being a kid? And so I, I really wanted to talk about that and, and just note the importance of how extraordinary uh, those kids were during that time on Full House. And the other thing that I, that I always um, am very aware of is how amazing their moms were. Oh. Their parents were really incredible because it's a lot to manage. You got to get your kid to that set every day, um, driving in the car. You've got, by the time you arrive on that set, you've got to be a professional. Absolutely. At four years old, that's pretty amazing, yeah. you know, and, and you, you're, you've got a lot of pressure on you from studios and networks and producers and writers to deliver. Absolutely. And, you know, for, for us, we were older, so we had been working already and we kind of knew the process to, but to be a kid thrown into that's pretty, I, I couldn't imagine my kid, my son, Luke, like being thrust into that. I would be I'd be having heart palpitations. Well, the like, anxiety I think yeah. they must have felt, right? So so you you have a child who's on a show that has to perform at the level of an adult right. who has to come to set having learned their lines and then be able to act their lines. Right. And then right. Um, also try to maintain some kind of childhood and go home and have dinner. And if you have homework, do your homework. I mean... It's a huge balancing act. And I also think, I feel like we were so fortunate. Again, Tom and Bob, Jeff, so many others um, set the tone on stage. And that we all, again, I know it sounds corny, but it I don't think you can overstate it. It was a family and we took care of, it's going to make me emotional, but we took <laughs> care okay. of. It's we full house. No, but I mean, <laughs> this is exactly it. We took care of each other. Yeah. And that, I think, is what is the most remarkable. And I think that's what still shines when you watch those episodes. Yeah. Like I really, it, I, you need a full house hug a, right now. I always I have full house moments yeah, in my know. life it's, where you see the cue coming a mile away. You're like, yeah, Jesse and Bennett's violins are coming <laughs> and you're like, I'm having oh, a moment. I know. I know. We need to get producers. We need to get <laughs> tissues for our guests. Okay. In case we have these, uh, oh these watermark God. moments. No, I mean, it's. Yeah. It, so, um, I want to talk more about, about your career. Cause you've sure. had a really great career. I mean, your career has always kind of been rooted in family entertainment. Yep. Do you think that you kind of gravitated towards that? Or do you think you were kind of plucked, you know, plucked out and, and, put in this family, this incredible family entertainment environment. But I mean, look, I mean, what you've done and where you are now, right. you're CEO of Cyber right. Group Studios USA. And we actually have a show. Yes, we have a show together. Yes. On together, which is really cute. And it's been so much fun to be able to kind of, we've gone full circle yes. to be able to work again yeah. together like this, you know? So do you think, do you think, Having a moment. you know, um, we really do. No, need, I really, I'm good. I'm tissues. so good, but yeah. I'm just like, in a. but, but, you know, you've been really, you know, firmly planted in, in that family entertainment space. And yeah. now, you know, you're like someone who's deciding what family entertainment is going to be for kids. That's a really important role, especially today where so many things have changed. Do you find that that's a real challenge to be able to pick the right material to be able to you know, steer a show towards the path that it needs to be? Well, I will say that when we were on in the show and on the show, we knew exactly, nobody took it for granted. We all knew exactly how rare and special that was. And then that sets you up, I think, for the rest of your career, right? Like you're acutely aware of the good versus the bad. Mm -hmm. And so I think if you can be purposeful and choose the good and and the people that you want to work with. I think that's that's set the foundation, if you will. And then I've been fortunate, yeah, to just do shows that I care about and and with themes that I care about. 
And then, so having been at, at Warner Brothers and then at Disney, and Disney certainly exemplifies that by the kind of content that, that Disney makes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then now at Cyber Group, yeah, I think, you know, what Full House did so well, and, and it really goes, again, it goes back to Tom Miller and Bob Boyette, and the value of heart and humor is a really tricky thing to get right. And I think that is, that is the underlying message of pretty much everything I've done is, is that balance. And, and we have a series together. Can I give it a plug? Is yeah, it- sure. Let's talk about it. Cause I love this show. It was created by me and Bob Harper, who is a wonderful uh, animator. And uh, Bob came to me with this idea called yum yum. And it was so cute. Uh, can we kind of talk about yeah. what the show is? We yes, can now, of course. right? Yeah, it's um, out. It's- uh, so it's about a little family uh, and they live on a floating island and uh, nothing really grows on this island. So they eat this pasty food called glob. And um, so they're always in search of different foods, which brings them around the planet uh, meeting uh, a lot of different cultures. Yes. And with those cultures are different foods and kids love food. Right. So this is the exploration of not only this family, but it's the exploration of cuisine around the planet. And it's really fun and it's musical. And uh, the, the artwork is phenomenal. I'm so proud of what the artists have come up with. And the characters are really fun and funny. And um, I think kids are going to love it. Well, and I, you know, in that initial pitch, it was really about the characters and the character development and the fact and and your sense of humor and really wanting kids to laugh, right? Yeah, yeah. We and this is a preschool laugh. series. So so yes, there are messages embedded within the stories, but it is with a very light, whimsical touch. So so you are you are learning and you are exploring and and you are also laughing. Yeah. And you don't realize you're learning because you're laughing. Of course. (laughs) Um, No, it's just um, it's just a delightful and it feels very different than a lot of other preschool series, I think, that are out there. Because, again, you know, and there is a great need for um, the educational and the emotional um, development. And this has all of that embedded in it. But at the very core of it, it is it it's funny and it's also family. And again, at the episodes culminate with the family at the dinner table. So really, I think no matter where you are in the world, it's that moment of coming together and sharing not only your day, but sharing the food. Yeah. And You're getting to sit down with your family. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which, I mean, it's weird how it does all come full circle though, Dave. Like, yeah. It really has, again, I think the values that, that the show um, just put out in the world are ones that I think we all should be reminded of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, uh, I just want to thank you for, for being here because you were such an important part of those building years with full house, you know, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just really happy that you, you got to join us here on full house rewind, but do one more thing before we say goodbye, because it's time for, ah, cut it out. Aww. Cut it out. Okay, of course, every episode of Full House had a heartfelt scene, and we have cut out a scene from episode three that you and I are going to read together. So you got your script. Yes, well, after my acting, you may want to cut it out. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> you're going to be, well, you're going to be playing the role of DJ, and I'm going to be playing the role of Stephanie from episode three. Ready? Candace, I want to apologize in advance. <laughs> You were a far better actor than okay. I would deliver. Okay, this is going to be fun. We're going to have fun. I, it's going to be this great. Is, this is It's going to be great, and I may cry this again. Is, okay, that's okay. Um, All right, ready? So, um, Stephanie. You call action? Sorry. Okay, yeah. Hold on. That's right. I'm a director. That's right. Come on. I should, yeah. All right, and action. Stephanie, what's wrong? No friends. You can't expect to make friends the first day. You know, when I started kindergarten, I didn't know anybody either. What about Kimmy? We were just in the same class, but I didn't talk to Kimmy for six months. Because she's an airhead? She's not an airhead. She just hates thinking. That's probably why we're not in the same class anymore. I just got stuck and 
in a room full of omelet heads where I don't know one person. Pretty scary. Real scary. But Stephanie, you can't run away every time you're scared. If you don't try new things, you'll never know what you're missing out on. Where did I hear that? Oh, he was right. Who was right? You don't know him. Anyway, making friends takes time. But you've already got one new friend in school already. Who? Me. And I'm right down the hall. Room six. You can't miss me. I'm the only omelet head with blonde hair. Thanks. And they hug. Always brings a tear to my eye. Thank you, Karen Miller. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Karen Miller. It was great having Karen Miller here for episode three, giving us some great Full House trivia and fun facts. However, I still think it was a bit odd with Jesse sitting in a classroom dressed as an exterminator. <laughs> Full House videos seem to be everywhere you look on the internet. And we like to bring them to you on Full House Rewind. Here, take a look at this one. could say she puts the glad in gladstone have you got a video you'd like to send us well we'd love to hear from you so send us the link to your video at full house rewind at podco.us and you know what we close every episode of full house rewind by giving all of you who need it a hug so here it is your full house hug bring it in that's our show We'd like to thank Karen Miller for stopping by and thank you for listening and watching because you are the heart and soul of Full House Rewind. Now, go out there and share the love. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Full House Rewind. To watch clips from the pod, go check out the Full House Rewind Clips YouTube channel at the link in the description. And we'll see you next week.